Hey Jan, my name is Landon. I am from Zero Grid. We live in our bus. This is our bus, our Hino RG197. We live in our bus full time and we help others do the same with um, building epic off-grid systems to be able to run basically whatever you want. So I'm an electrician and the things that I uh, find important is safety and reliability. So living full time in the bus, we need to rely on our power to keep the fridge going, the lights going and for all our cooking and our hot water as well. But I just wanted to make this video <clears throat> and hopefully it's a quick one, but uh, knowing me, it's gonna be 20 minutes long, but um, I wanted to explain about sizing your system for your bus and choosing the right kit. <coughs> Excuse me, so I've got lots of different kits and um, um, I'll start from the top. So basically on the, the roofs of the bus, we're, we're lucky that we have good real estate um, to be able to fit some decent amount of solar panels. But the, the key answer with how many solar panels we want to fit on the roof is as many as we can fit. That's um, that's as simple as, as it gets and there's, there's nothing more than the most that we can do. So um, some buses I can fit eight of the 510 watt solar panels absolutely perfect there's our bus for instance we've got seven 315 watt panels and that's the the most that we can fit in in between our hatches and with other things going on the roof and and that's also perfect so um so that's number one key part of the system is fit as many solar panels as we can and then the the second part of the the system which is probably the more crucial part to get right is the inverter size so the inverter is what creates 240 volt power from the battery bank voltage and um and we want that inverter to be able to run all of the things that we want at the same time so narelle my wife she wanted to be able to run the split system air conditioner the electric fry pan and the thermomix at the same time so that's that's the three things for the instantaneous load is is what we're trying to work out so um so with those three things that you we can add up those um appliances to work out how many watts they will draw so a 4.2 kilowatt split system air conditioner draws about 1200 watts <coughs> our thermomix draws about 1200 watts and uh, um, what was the other thing I said? Electric fry pan, that draws about 1800 watts and they, they all cycle, so they're not a constant draw. So we can even allow a little bit to, um, you know, to go over the maximum rated amount because the Victron inverters that I use are really good at, at short term running those higher appliances. So we can, we've even drawn um, 6,600 watts out of our 5,000 watt inverter. But basically what it comes down to is that there's, I like to put th things into categories of big items and then, you know, all the other stuff. So big items are things like, um, like the electric fry pan, the thermo mix, the induction cooktop, the uh, electric hot water service, the, um washing machine the dryer things like that so that they're all the big items like toasty toaster toaster kettle uh coffee machine things like that they're all big items they're all between a thousand and even up to two thousand watts each so i call them my big items and the inverter sizings go from the three thousand the five thousand and the eight thousand so at the 3000 it's it's two appliances that's kind of what we can run at the same time so it's an air conditioner and a coffee machine at the same time and for some people that that's all they need and that's they've got you know lots of gas appliances and that type of stuff um, or then the next size up the 5000 that can run three major appliances at once so that's the that's the people like us who want to run the air conditioner the thermomix and the um, induction or the electric fry pan type thing. So that's the three items. And then there's there's some people who want to be able to run uh, four big items at once and, and not even think about it. And that's where the 8,000 watt comes into play. So they can run, you know, like a um, toaster, kettle, microwave um, and the split system while having the washing machine running and, and live like they're within the suburbs, um, plug, plugged into power wherever they are. So so that's um, that's how I like to pick the size of the inverter. And then the, the other things to to pick if if we choose to or not is is the alternator size. So I'm pointing to the back as is a as a pusher they like to call them. So the motor is in the back, but um, we have a fairly 
big alternator in our bus, we have a 175 amp alternator. So we can work backwards from there. And I like to only load up the alternators about 75, 80% if we're pushing our luck. Um, capacity so I'll do some simple maths but if we had a 100 amp alternator I'd only really go up to like a 70 amp charger so um, in the the DC to DC chargers in these buskets they come in two different sizes they come in a 10 amp and a 20 amp and they are rated at their output uh, amps so one uses 22 amps of power from the alternator and the other one uses about 45 amps of power from the alternator and we can parallel as many of them as possible as we wish so we can have two of the the big chargers and then that, that can put 2000 watts of power into our into our batteries while we drive along so um so and and some people don't even want to charge from the alternator and that's fine as well it's also what i love about these systems is that they can grow we can add things to them as, as time goes on even like us for instance that um our system looks different now than it did four four years ago when i built it because now we have a trailer and it's uh on the, on the back of the bus i can maybe i'll show a, a picture if i can manage that but um um we have a trailer with 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels on there we've got four 600 watt solar panels Panels. and so we've had to add another solar charger into our system and we can easily add those things as time goes on which I, I find really handy and and that brings me on to the final part and that's the battery capacity so the batteries that I like to use in these buskets are 48 volt batteries and there's there's lots of benefits to use 48 volt batteries but they're, they're really good at running these big inverters is probably the, the easiest way to explain it and um, what I love about the 48 volt battery banks is that we can easily add more batteries as time goes on. <coughs> so battery capacity is a little bit like a rainwater tank. We have to collect the rain while it rains, we have to hold it, and then when it's not raining, we can discharge from it. So it's, a, it's the same with batteries. So for us, having a battery capacity, it helps us to be able to pick a spot in the middle of forest, knowing that we have that capacity, that even if we're through some filtered light, we've got, a, we've got a few days of capacity up our sleeve before we have to start thinking about moving out into the sun like, like we are here today. So, um, so, so I like to sometimes start the battery capacity at a a, at, a, at a minimum just to um, see how things goes and sometimes they stay at, stay at that minimum but sometimes they go on so um, for the 3000 watt the minimum battery capacity would be one battery and for the 5000 it would be two batteries so that's um you know it's, it's a pretty decent system we lived in our bus for a, a long long period of having our 5 kva inverter and two batteries or 10 kilowatt hours is, is what we had so um and the good thing is, is that we can add these, add new batteries onto it any time throughout the stage of the life. So it might be a year, we might, um, you know, decide to add, a, add another battery in. And it's always good to, to plan these additions on when we're building the system so that we can build a space to fit four batteries, even though we only got two, because one day we might get a third or even a fourth. So, um, so that's, that's, that's a good thing at this planning stage to be getting right. Um, and the choices of batteries, we've got two, two main choices that I've <coughs> really narrowed it down to and that I'm really happy with. And um, the, uh, I'm going to call it the budget option, but that's probably, it's not quite what I mean, but um, the lower cost option, yeah, it's the same thing, isn't it? But it doesn't sound as bad, but um, is the BSL bats. So what I love about these is that they have a direct communications with our Victron system. So we can see uh, alarms and state of charge, state of health, battery imbalances, minimum, maximum cell balances, uh, voltages, all those type of things, which is really handy information, especially for me to be able to remotely view and fault find these systems which we can all do through the Victron systems um, and they have a pretty clear statement about mounting these batteries in like uh, mobile installations buses caravans what, whatever you want to call it and they give us a five-year warranty in that circumstance and in a house they give us a 10-year warranty so to me that shows that they are a decent battery that they will put their name to it for for 10 years of um you know making sure that it's going to work that long and um that the that you know to have a um to 
to give it five years in a transportable building, I think is fair to no, not knowing how rough these transportable buildings can be. A bus sort of bounces over the road, rocks over the road. It, it's not, in my opinion, a super harsh environment, but I, but they have to make these statements to to cover the, cover their butts really. But but then as their as their premium choice, their top shelf choice would be would be MPS or Mictronics. And the reasons that I, I, I choose, I, I really like their battery is, is that they are robust. They're built, they're assembled here in Australia by an Aussie Sparky, Anthony, if he's watching this, good on you, mate. But um, he he builds things knowing the Australian conditions, knowing that uh, that we're, we're rough on things, that it gets hot, it gets cold, all of those type of things. So they're, they're built to last. And he gives us a clear statement that it's 10 years. Doesn't matter where we put them in the back of a bloody canopy, in a caravan, in a bus, he gives us 10 year warranty. So I think that's um, really bloody good and and he's also happy for us to be adding batteries in at any stage in that life with new and old and and that type of stuff as well so having that um, local support is is always good so um, just to recap go back around in circles to to size our system correctly is fit as many solar panels on the roof as we possibly can tick that's easy we can charge off the alternators if we choose and we can work backwards from the size of the alternator and then load that up to 75 percent of its capacity that's that tick um, the inverter size we have to work out if we either want to run two three or four plus um, appliances at the, at the same time and that will determine if we need a 3000 a 5000 or an 8000 um, and then the other thing is the battery capacity. We, we start at a minimum or if, if you really think that, um, you know, you, you to have that rather look at it than look for it attitude to, to, to go the extra capacity. But um, I, I love the starting at a minimum and letting, letting the system grow as, as time goes on as well. So, um, yeah, hopefully this has helped clear up some questions that you have in your head. If you do... Um, um, want to chat about it I have a phone booking service where you can book in a phone call I'll put another link here and um, that you can have a yarn to me on the phone and, and talk out some different ideas and that type of stuff um, trying to think if there's anything else um, probably back on fitting the solar panels if we can keep all of the solar panels the same it is best like all 500s or all 440s is is easier if not to split them in halves. I, I usually run them in multiple strings. I have the front half of the bus on one solar charger and the back on another, so we could have two different types of solar panels, but not too, mu too much of a mixed bag is, um, is key there. Um, there is some magic voltages that we need to hit and there's some numbers that we need to not exceed so we need to get them at least 10 volt higher in the strings and, th and this is where I can I can help design these strings as well to make sure that we're hitting these numbers but usually we're aiming for 60 volt is a uh, minimum and then 120 is our maximum and that's because of a AS3001 which is the electrical wiring standards rule. Um, Mounting of the bus gear. I'm just trying to think of all the questions that I get. Mounting of the gear. I really think that the the, the best spot in a bus is underneath in the bins down here. <coughs> Our system is on the other side of the bus, on the driver's side, I suppose. Um, and underneath the bus, that appeases the rules for batteries not being in a habitable space. Um, we can do things to keep them cool. We can implement fans, ventilation. Um, we, we can even monitor it for, for temperatures. We can even have like kick in automatic, like 12 volt computer fans top thing. There's so many things that we can do. Um, I made a YouTube video actually about, um, you know, building systems like on a board like I do for people and, and it explains the importance of like the layout and, and that type of stuff for, for heat and, and things like that. Um, that's important and um, yeah mount, mounting the batteries the way I like to, to mount the batteries is to have some foam padding uh, like a like a vibration pad on the bottom and then I like to cut strips of that as well for in between the batteries to leave a little bit of circulation in between them and I then I like to strap them down fairly, fairly firmly to tie them in um, that's the way I like to mount them. Mounting solar panels, I've got a right up which I can put up here as well. This is my magic corner. Um, and I like to use the household rails. So they are formed, they look like a, a U and a C formed together on the, um, on the roof of, uh, 
on the on the channel and I mount them to the roof at each rib. So in our bus that we have, I call them ribs, but uh, it's kind of like the frame of the bus that hoops around. And on every one of those, I put a, a little one of these um, L brackets that hold these rails. And generally we're aiming to mount the rails at the one quarter mark and the three quarter mark of the solar panels or a quarter in from each end. So if the panel's two meters wide, we like to mount them 500 mil in and 500 mil in sort of running down the lengths of the bus and then lay the panels across that way. So I like that because that gives us a good air gap underneath the, um, the, the solar panels and it's a nice easy way that we can swap out panels and, and do that type of stuff. And some people choose to put little wind deflectors up the front to stop stuff going underneath. You can, you can over engineer as, as much as you like and, um, and yeah, but, um, but things about keeping it reliable, I suppose, is to, um, you know, maintain like, um, the, the dust out of the system, nothing likes dust. The cooling fins don't quite work the same. There's little communication terminals that can get stuff on them. So I use my little 18 volt blower and I just give it a, a quick little blowout sort of just on a regular maintenance every couple of months type thing. So and that um, is a simple simple thing that we can do. And, and sort of on the batteries, they have these push-in uh, connectors. They're called Amphenol connection, connectors. And they click into the battery and sort of, you know, just go through and make sure they're all clicked to some vibration happen and we can even go to the degree of, of running over things with a screwdriver just to um, you know make sure nothing's moved so um, but yeah anyway hope this has helped um, answer up some questions about um, sizing your off-grid bus system and um, we're, we're always here if you need a hand and hopefully you get um, your bus finished and be out on the road and you can meet us somewhere epic like this I'll do a, um, a quick little spin around but um, we are at a uh, lake spot here and it's um, absolutely beautiful. So anyway, hope this helps guys. Cheers.